Hey everybody, Brian from Team Aquascape. Today is kind of a cool day for me because I don't get to do this all the time. In fact, I don't think I've ever done this. I am going out and doing maintenance packages. Now maintenance packages are routine visits where we help out our customers just kind of maintain their pond, clean the skimmer nets, cut back dead lily leaves, add the necessary water treatments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason I'm excited about this one is I haven't seen this pond in 20 years. Literally, I think it's, well, maybe 15 years. But I'm here and I kind of love Love it like I know we get better and better um, we practice and practice and practice but this pond might be 15 years old and I haven't seen it since and they're one of our diamond packages which means we come out here once a week and just make sure it looks pristine now this is our first visit of the year and I can tell you there's not a whole lot of plant life but let me just kind of show you the design that I came up with 15 20 years ago ish I've got my net, I got some fine filter pads. We'll get into that later, but we'll go about the design right now. So here we are, here's the house. Really cool, kind of sprawling ranch house. Deck up here. If we come up into the deck, we can see that the pond is designed to be viewed from up here. We've got a classic biofall sitting over here. A really cool split stream that comes down. And you notice here, the water just kind of disappears and the ground goes over. That was an old technique that we used to do a long time ago. And maybe we'll do it again soon because we haven't done it in 15 20 years ish it's called a land bridge and so it's actually a corrugated pipe a big three foot culvert pipe laid on top of the liner then the liner wraps around it and we can put soil right back over the top but it's cool because the water just disappears through that cave and then we've got another waterfall that comes in from this direction over here and kind of meanders down and comes into a decent it looks like 18 by 16 foot pond with a single skimmer down there so let's go down and see what we've got Look at this waterfall, kind of cool. Like it splits all over the place. I have to say, I don't remember building the waterfall, but I know I did. Lots of granite boulders. Here's that land bridge. Comes down, goes over into here. Looks like a two foot to 30 inch deep pond. Looking pretty good. So I gotta show you this because it's kind of my pet peeve and it happens to a lot of ponds and I'm not sure why it doesn't get fixed when we have the opportunity to fix it during clean outs or something. This is a note for our maintenance guys and I just want to show you guys how easy it would be to fix. But it happens, right? It's just an older pond. It just gets neglected. It doesn't get thought about maybe the landscape hides most of it but it's the biofalls and hiding the biofalls so this is a classic 6,000 biofalls you can tell by the triangular shape on it you've got the rock ledge on there and you've got boulders nicely placed along the top it's just missing that last 10 percent so everybody always asks me how do we hide this thing and the worst thing you could possibly do would be put a big giant stone over the top of it first it'll look totally out of place because there's not another big flat stone anywhere else in the land Landscape, so it'll just look weird. The other thing is that big flat stone is going to put an awful lot of weight on top of this, causing these edges to settle a little bit more. The easiest way to hide it is bring soil all the way up to this edge right here. Even if it comes up a little higher and kind of mounds this way, that'll work. Then I would come in here with a foam gun, foam these joints in through here. And once the foam dries, then I would come in and do gravel. A little bit of soil helps hide this area here. Foam and gravel helps hide the voids in between. Even some aquatic plants can go into these areas. And then the best thing to do is come in here and like I see these hostas sitting over there. You might split and divide some of those guys, but you can put a hosta right here. Half of that plant will come out over this container, completely hiding it forever. Right now, I don't see any plant life up here at all. And really for like 40 bucks in plants, three, four bags of soil, this would all get hidden. And so we're gonna take care of that next week for them and get this thing all buttoned up. And I'll show you the difference on how we can hide that and make it look so so much better. Look at there, there's a mossy log. You got the natural high side there, high side over there, and then that water just rolls over. And that log's been there since the day we put it in. Looks like a burning bush is <laughs> trying to seed itself into the log. Nature will prevail if you let it. Neat little waterfall up there. Let's go over here. You can see the irises are just starting to come up over in here. Haven't flowered yet, so not much to cut back on this one. No lilies. I don't even see water lilies in this pond. Another note I'll put on the sheet. 
it'd be great to get some water lilies in here. And then we need to have a conversation with the customer about cutting some of this stuff back. I know these are all just volunteers. Like that's not supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be there. But I don't want to cut stuff back if that's the way they want it. So I'll just have to put that on there. You can see we've got a, a classic skimmer. We could also bring out a new basket. It's all beat up, kind of worn away. And we've got our dosing system. So we're gonna check the dosing system, make sure the bag is full. If we need to change that, we'll change that. I wanna, of course, check all my lights, make sure the lights are working. And then here's the rest of my checklist. So empty skimmer basket, check, done. You gotta clean that filter pad, check the pump and the waterfall, that's looking good. Check for string algae a little early in the year to see string algae. And you can see lots of trees, so a lot more shade. Ion gen, dosing system, underwater lights. I gotta apply some bacteria, go around, just check the liner. You can see there's some liner exposed in different spots. So I wanna cover that stuff up there. You can see here, there was obviously a blowout of some sort in here. This just needs probably a half a yard of soil in through here. Then I can take these rocks, actually back them off a little bit and get soil in between. I wanna get this liner up as high as I possibly can. I wanna take these rocks, move them back out to here and then put soil in between. So these rocks will act as more as a retaining wall holding the soil in between. And then I probably need four or five, maybe even up to six bags of gravel. But I need to fix all of this in through here. And I wanna get this liner, I've got the extra liner to do it, to bring this liner all the way up to here, which would then make this edge bomb proof. And you can see that area there. I need some soil around the back side of the skimmer to help hide that. I definitely wanna come in with some more gravel in through these areas. I'd like to get some mulch down over the land bridge just to help that liner over the top of the culvert pipe. I'd like to reseal this biofall with foam. I'm thinking we're losing a lot of water where we don't need to be losing the water. Probably block that off right there and get more coming through here. So it comes from there and there. And then I definitely want some soil up around the biofalls. We've also got an area over here that'll be a problem sooner than later. So we can see how the soil here is just eroded and eroded in a way. So if I could just take some of these rocks from over in here, get them kind of right in here, and then do that same thing. Get the rocks up to a height, backfill with soil, and then gravel. We'll be all good to go. So I'm going to come out here next week, hopefully next Monday. Yeah, I think that should work because I go out of town next Wednesday. If I can come out here next Monday, I think I can tackle all this stuff by myself. One other guy would make it a whole lot easier, but I'll show you that process next week when we, I come back out here. All right, off to the next job. Just got to stop number two. Now we actually service some ponds that we didn't install and this is one of those. Gosh, I'd like to take a skid steer back here and just redo it, but I know it's probably gonna look a whole lot better in the summer once all the plants and stuff come up. My initial thought is, yeah, it just is not to the standards that we like to work at. So let me flip this around, show you a couple things that I would love to change and what I'm gonna do, I think just for my initial visit right here. This is a platinum package, not a diamond package. And so we only come out once every two weeks. So we don't get to stay on top of it as much as we'd like, but we can still spruce some stuff up here and there. So let me turn this around and show you the first things that I'm paying attention to. So obviously this biofalls is way out of the ground. I don't think the soil was ever all the way up to the top here. When I see those air bubbles at the top, it's a telltale sign that the water level in the pond is too low. The reason you're seeing air bubbles bubble up here is because the pump is not just grabbing water, it's grabbing air and water at the same time and pushing that air through here and then up through here. I see liner all propped up in here. The way you would fix this is bring in like three, four yards of topsoil, move these rocks out of here, get soil in through all of this, pull this wall out, further or add some more boulders to this wall. On the back side, you can obviously add a lot more soil this way. They did a stream, they raised the stream up and which is fine. They just should have brought soil all the way up to there and it shoots down drastically this way. So the whole thing is kind of this like a volcano looking area. You can see that the yard pitches kind of this way and they're trying to get the waterfall to come this way, which is always a challenge. The other thing I would have done, like we need to come in here and just kind of spruce up this gravel and through here, do a lot. They've got actually a lot of big koi in a relatively shallow pond. It looks like it's probably two feet deep out there in the center. And I don't know if you can see this, but fishing line is all over the place just to keep the heron from getting in. The skimmer box is he 
heaved up out of the ground, which is a major problem, which is probably why it's sucking dry. So the whole skimmer box is up out of the ground. Hydrostatic pressure, water probably got underneath that skimmer box, causing it to heave up. And now the water is coming in at a lower level. So let's pop this open and see what we can see. I can definitely hear it sucking dry. Yeah. So the skimmer box is full. Water level is actually pretty high in there. But what happens with these old baskets, the holes get smaller and smaller as they go down. So you can see that the water level is actually all the way up to the top of the weir, which means if I came in here and just started pulling some stuff out, I'd be able to clean that off pretty easy. We should still lower the skimmer box at some point and then bring some gravel out. So let me just get that skimmer box all cleaned up for them, see what I can do with the edges, and then we'll go from there. Another big no-no is this plant. These are Phragmites, and as pretty as they look, it's actually one of a few plants I know will pierce right through the liner. When I see a group of Phragmites like this here, and then I also see them outside the liner over here it worries me quite a bit like you can see them starting in the grass out here each one of these is attached to the next and those runners are like needles wanting to pierce right through the liner it's actually better now just to leave it because as that runner goes through the liner it's actually like a cork in the liner if I were to come and pull all that stuff out it'd be like pulling the cork out of the liner so right now my goal will be just clean up the skimmer try to spruce up some of these edges and then get off to the next one well that didn't take long at all. Uh, just cleaned out the skimmer mat, cleaned out the basket, hosed all that stuff down. It's really convenient when you can just flip that stuff upside down and spray it off. Uh, you can see the flow on the waterfall changed drastically. No more air bubbles, got a lot more going on flow wise. Came in, kind of spruced up the stream. There was a lot of muck that had settled right in here. And I just kind of stirred that up, put my really fine net right at the base right here. and was able to catch a lot of that stuff before it went to the pond. It always clouds up the pond a little bit, but the skimmer box will suck all that in. I had a great conversation with the homeowner just about doing some of the touch-ups here and there. Sorry about, sorry about that noise back there. Doing some of the touch-ups, but they're a little older in their 80s and they're actually thinking of moving and trying to grab a yard. Has a little less maintenance than this one. And you can tell that at one point they really enjoyed gardening, but probably just looking for a simpler life. So I don't blame them on not putting too much more money into the pond if they're gonna be moving. All right, on to the next. All right, next stop, the one and only Aquaterra. This is the house that the pond guy, you know him, Greg Woodstock, used to reside in. Now there's proud new owners. Of course, they bought the house because they love the water feature so much. But let's look at this. It's actually looking pretty good. This was the front yard feature. I remember designing this with Ed, the pond professor, and it was really quite easy. We said we wanted to get a waterfall starting up by the front door. There's a great slope to work with, waterfall stream coming down. We did this kind of unique bridge. In hindsight, it probably would have done something else, but it was inspired off of something we did out out in Ireland and uh, reminded me of my grandfather's uh, old cattle crossings. So you got these big slabs of stone, the water just races through the joints. You can see the things have shifted and moved a little bit over the 20 plus years that it's been here. Actually looks really cool. Anyways, waterfall stream comes down, cool bridge, really cool pond. I love the shape of this pond. I like that little seating area in the front yard. All comes over a negative edge with a waterfall facing out towards the street out that way. This is just an awesome rock. Fun little waterfall down here at the bottom. You know, big rock, big rock, just kind of pouring over through here. The landscaping still actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's gonna look so much better when everything starts filling in. And some of this stuff, like these spruce trees are kind of on their last legs and some things look a little tired, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. We don't maintain all of it. We maintain the front pond and then the back spheres. So let's go check those back spheres and see how they look. So I have a couple helpers. This is my first time out here maintaining this pond. And I don't know if these dogs always help, but they sure do seem to like me. I mean, look at the face. <laughs> give kisses? Yeah, you wanna give kisses? All right, let's go see. So weird to be walking back here, know that I'm not going inside to say hi to Greg or somebody else. So the pool's on. Ooh, the pond actually looks pretty good back here. The pond looks really good. That evergreen over there is one of my favorite ever. It's a hillside creeper. It's just a super cool evergreen. The trees have gotten massive. Yeah, things look pretty cool out here. So the urns, this time of year, beginning of May in Chicago, 55, 60 degrees. 
actually look pretty good. I don't see a whole lot of algae growth on them at all, but we'll uh, kind of give them a once over, make sure the lights are working and everything else, and then head on out of here. One more stop, and then we're gonna call it a day. The last stop of the day, and I totally remember this pond. And I should, because we built it like three years ago, but it was really cool. Haven't seen it since, but what I miss the most is reconnecting with our customers. I just remember Sarah, the owner of this house, being a fantastic person to work for and totally trusting us in the design. And it's kind of cool because of the front yard pond, which is not totally unique, but pretty unique. We don't do a whole lot of front yard ponds, but what I like about this one so much is you have no idea that there's a pond in the front yard here. You can see a little bit of a landscape berm. You can see a north wind Japanese maple over in the corner. Big maple right there. A bunch of allium, daylilies. I'm guessing those are roses underneath all of those styrofoam containers. You're greeted by that bowl that's got water spilling out of it. And then just a perfect little pond. Now, the patio <laughs> needs some attention, but we have some stone steps that came down to this patio space. And if the pond's looking good, I'm just gonna sit and kind of clean up this patio for her because the pond's actually looking pretty clear to me. I can tell once again that that skimmer box is probably full because those bubbles coming up in the biofalls. We also need a little bit of gravel up around the biofalls in that area. We'll pop out some of these weeds and we'll call it a day. Um, we also plumbed these walls right here, which hold back the patio. So kind of a different application for these. They plumb, just kind of roll over that way and it looks great. We've got a jet shooting up over here that also has some air bubbles. Well, let's get this thing all cleaned up and then we'll get out of here. Hey, not the most exciting day, but kind of cool to come back and reconnect with all of our, my customers. We even meet a new one, one I've never met before, and just get out there and live the life of the maintenance guys for a little bit. I would actually do this quite often. It's kind of cool to come back and see all the different projects. It feels a little nostalgic, I guess, but fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything you want me to focus on and I get out and maintenance again, let me know and I'll make sure we put a video on it. Hey, thanks for watching. You know what to do. Subscribe, comment, share, all of that good stuff. And we'll keep doing this. Thanks so much. Bye.